So some people rode into battle on a horse. I ride into battle on a fucking lion. Because that's the heart that I bring to the table. So here we go. Here's uh, part of the con anyways. And I'm always writing. And uh, he doesn't want to be seen. That's why. He, oh, there you go. He's kind of trying to casually look in away from me. Oh, showing his face. He, he managed to look left twice, but never wanted to look right once. Suspicious. I notice everything. But anyways, I digress. So here is the the university hospital cons, which is once again academic for me to see. So AV, there's an so I guess that's animal vengeance. So get all the animal violators that aren't puppeted. That, and then getting all the human violators that aren't puppeted. So anyways, this is the Nightmare on Elm Street con, which I'm sure they facilitate lots at uh, the sick kids hospital. So they must give kids nightmares, unfortunately. So inherently good kids, uh, never giving them a nightmare and having them leech off of inherently ap evil cultivators. Right, like uh, that are generational pedophiles that are leeching and surviving these cancer scares or whatnot, and these inherently good people, the real true human talent are dying, right? So saving the real true human talent and, and leeching off the, the parasites, right? Because uh, what they do is they make kids have nightmares and then they make the kids hop into bed with the parents and then they hijack human bodies that make them sexual uh, things to happen and then they punish them with consequences like putting them in a wheelchair so that one right there this person right here based on that shirt there there would be a blue con a fellatio con if they're a man or blue i guess for it work for women as well since they had a blue shirt on if they had an orange shirt on it probably would have been a boy you know red shirt red means murder basically Anyway, anyways, that's why my sheen is the shine that I bring to the table. So see that right there, that light is basically how my soul looks like when it's unhindered with technology. That's what my, what my aura brings. So that being said, this is why I always wanted to emanate to be a hero, not die, but to have my my hero shine on the field and I would have been the guy in uh, in a in a pitch battle where if I'd be looking for the hardest guy on the field and taking his life the hardest guy the guy that was slaughtering my teammates I'm going after them all the time right like it would I'd be looking for the guy that's fault like making my men fall and progressively work in there if I survived that's, that's all my goal would have been from that moment forward. It didn't matter. If I was experienced, if I had, say, two weeks under my belt in any battle, then I had at least one battle. At least seen, felt, nowadays, if I heard bullets fly by my head, I, that would be my instinct, right? But that, to be, to emanate and be heroic, walk tall, basically, and uh, rise up to the occasion and liberate mankind, and privacy of thought started with my mind. So a side note, a less serious thing is, uh, I guess uh, one of my, uh, since my name is gonna be Eminence Cristiano Meyer Diggins, currently it's Christian Eric Arnie Meyer. I'm gonna have a coat of arms for my family. So it is, uh, the Meyer Diggins is gonna be a, a lion, probably with an eagle, a bald eagle, soaring over the ball like over the line basically I have to design it see exactly because with birds I always want to see uh, see the wings uh, expanded right to, uh, so, so you know that they can fly basically right when you see a bird without with the wings at their side right you can't tell that flight's possible by just looking at that biology right and just like uh, that being said uh, it's not a lion's roar that uh that you should fear, it's, it, it's a silence.
So that was a, an innuendo for the only people that could see my thoughts. Because in the Gladiator movie, I'm the Sun Seeker, I'm a warrior just trying to find my homeland basically. Like my, my promised land, my peace for mankind, right? I'm trying to end war for all of mankind unless there's an alien species. Oh, they made me flinch there and I could hear it. So that, so showing their culpability and the quantum computing or organic biology and, uh, and implanted thoughts, hacked acoustic rays. So now I'm gonna resist it. So boom, getting them out, getting the 333 club with the people that know what that means and the monster drink and people that know what that means and any Red Bull maneuvers because I am the living legend, permanently, indefinitely, biologically immortal. And uh, so they try to do some flinch tech with, with, I'm not a fire, I'm the fire extinguisher. Right? Like, I could develop technology to make forest fires never happen again, but they're stopping my mind, right? You know, like with wind will be converted into hydrogen fuel power and it's gonna provide propulsion and uh, heating, cooling in the byproducts water. So that being said, now you're broke down in any scenario, but in this scenario, you're in a desert, in a dire situation, and you need a drink. Now you have water that is cold. You could, it'd be cold part of the byproduct system. Instead of a cup holder, you have a water fountain in your car for survival, right? So how could octane, the gasoline, or electric vehicles ever compete with me? Right, so I make industries obsolete, right? So that's why they suppress me. And I even know how to sell it up, right? Like once I, I'm gonna, I have to build a car company because pretty much cars are the only thing I really care about. I'm not into boats really, like people like boats. I love them. I love how they look and they are that once, I guess it would have to be, well, one of the, my, one of my ideas, I guess I'll say it to the world. So it'd be, because uh, I'm gonna do it better. So I'll just, do this and see what people come up with is uh, it's going to be a sailboat with this technology like a wind hydrogen fuel technology so I would have to develop the engine for them right so they need me for that anyways but uh, they, there's companies that would have concepts but once again I would uh, do it better because I'm super clever so that being said it would have to be converted into a plane right it would have to be it's not good enough for me to have won a sailboat because I might change my fucking mind and want to fly somewhere else. Because uh, I'm a man to the wind. When I own the entire planet, right, I want to change weather when I want to change. I could change weather by changing the clouds, but sometimes I want to do it more primitively, like hopping on a fucking airplane. There's one that just went by the building and missed it. So that's why I said airplane. Let's see if it shows up here. There's the bird. So I regained my energy from the bird. I felt a dab on my right, right above my right quad my right knee basically and it didn't show up there beyond the clouds unfortunately that would have been pretty good diving i try playability and there's the every any time i hear a bell especially when they weren't near any people where there's no hazard whatsoever it's how they sell a car in the system because i felt the dab on my left leg and i only mentioned the one on the right leg so they're like shit we can only sell half a con that only half his body is able to be hacked so he has extraordinary attributes on one side of his body, but not the other. That's what they try to do. They make it so my left leg is phenomenal. I feel like I could jump kick as high as I possibly could, right? Without real veal and penis envy. I don't even know what I could do. All they do is they simulate. Assume that with the simulation, I could kick the clouds, right? Like assume they're gonna do, they agitate the most penis envy. I can run like the one second, 100 meter dash, right? So assume things are, inflated right there's things that i'm i have extraordinary attributes like i am a superhuman so to speak but i'm going to be able to crush any bench i wouldn't but my son would crush any bench pressing i'm not going to crush records i might say for i might go instead of throwing a, the first pitch i might participate in a home run derby or something like that for baseball and like and then just depends what they want right like if the fans are clapping because like i did not play baseball in uh softball for like almost 20 years and then i uh played softball softball is much easier than hardball but anyways with softball i was 15 i think there was 15 16 pitches and i hit 15 home runs 15 home runs 
And this is without me being able to control my mind to slow down time, enhance reaction speed and precision, which I could cognitively do. And I would have time each pitch to be able to do this. I'd be fast enough, my mind's fast enough that I'd be able to watch the rotation of the pitch and hint and understand, and I'm so attuned to body language, I'd be able to determine how likely it would be for them to be throwing a slider, change up fastball, you know, whatever pitch they have. Because I'm a student of the game, so all I would do is, if I was playing against an opponent on Thursday, I'd be, Wednesday, I'm watching footage of all their pitchers, their entire pitchers, anything that I could see to see how they pitch and work the count in different scenarios, night games, day games, depending on the scenario. But I love baseball because the most because several reasons. Because you get hit something, which is fun, right? Like as a guy, you kind of want to hit stuff. Like the chopping wood is uh, therapeutic, right? And uh, so that being said, uh, so you get hit stuff, but you get to make the Willie Mays over the shoulder catch and dive and sacrifice for your team and survive. I do, I do it. You know what I mean? I want the heroes to survive. But uh, other people are necessary to plug the hole, so to speak, but only do that if uh, if you believe in the ideology, right? So f- fight for human privacy, really. Sometimes you need to, you know, cover the flanks or, you know, the, the, the center to basically create a decisive battle where you could double envelop your opponent, right? And then uh, break their will over time if attritional maneuvers are necessary. So anyways, they used to play uh, strategy games against me and I always won. So that being said, I'm nearly indomitable, you know, mainly because of uh, my mind capability and my mindset. I have a champion's mindset. I grew up in an inner city neighborhood and I had a great grandfather that had a factory and had hundreds of employees at work. He had employees at work. He, had, he walked the floor as the guy, right? You know what I mean? And to me, Mayer, Meyer is my last name, but pronounced phonetically is May er like Mayer, like Mayer. My family ran the show. My descent, like I ascend from people that ran the show so much that I have the most stacked, you know, I'm related to Sun Tzu, thank you very much. Right, I'm charming any way I want to be, ladies. The, the, you know, this is one of the most spectacular uh, buildings in Canada. I, I do love it. Unfortunately, I'm a, I love history, right? So it's only from the 1800s, unfortunately, right? So Canada, it's one of the most like, best buildings in Canada. But they've seen my genuine thoughts ahead of time, right? So I kind of rained on their parade, right? But it's... It's just that it's, uh, I love the building, but uh, I want to see buildings that were built a thousand years ago, right? Like I want to, you know, there's going to be, I'm a a romantic, a history romantic, basically, like a a historian. Like I got uh, 50% on my high school history exam, only 50%, but I got perfect on every question I answered because I over answered the question. I just went too in depth each question that I ran at a time. And unfortunately it was uh it was only a general class. In Canada it went general. There's basic, which unfortunately people from Alexander Henry uh influenced the world and they have a basic level education, right? In uh we used to say underwater uh basket weaving kind of deal, right? The small bus class, right? Like unfortunately as a kid, that's what how kids referred to other in high school so they they're not competent enough anyways to be making decisions that affect mankind's destiny right when their average IQ is probably like 84 and that's being generous right because a moron's level 70 and a moron is a student that would go to a basic level education school in Canada right then there's general and then advanced when I went to school but my parents didn't realize the difference between general and advanced so I was able to take general course I'm getting lit up here I could feel my body change but I'm not focused on it because I'm just focused on what I'm saying to the camera but anyways so so I'm no smoke and they're all smoke and here's the here we go here is the law con captain fluke app the five second storylines five second 
five second total time storylines. Total time. So, so I was walking it, and since, unfortunately, since I was walking, I could feel my heart rate change. So they're hacking my biology, so it makes it easier for them to uh, make me forget my thought. So, uh, and it's not like I'm gonna pause, stop, watch this last minute, and then continue that thought. So unfortunately, it takes the entire world's economy to accomplish that feat. And so within seconds, I was able to uh, de de destroy technology responsible and uninstall costing billions of dollars of real money and uh, hours of time that at the government level, like all these people that write AI software all day long with my neurons, right? I'm able to uninstall and cost people, my enemies, money. I'm able to diminish their supply with my neurons and they need billions of dollars. And I, my soul is unique to the human planet and uh, they try to kill me here and I didn't die, right? So I'm biologically immortal to these covert attempts. Could I, could I die getting thrown off a building? Probably, absolutely. I'd say 100%, most likely. Not 100%, but most likely it would be an unfortunate scenario, right? Sometimes, what if I did survive and I, now I have to kind of come back together? That would suck, right? So it could be an unfortunate reality for me. Like I'm not able to, uh, right now, watered down playing poker since I could put people on a street flush uh, it's kind of pedestrian and that's watered down and I'm about a, at least a hundred times smarter than that right so unfortunately I love Texas Hold'em but it's going to be boring for me because uh, there's still the luck component but if we in the sprint people would beat me but any marathon like any tournament I would have a uh, like I do now, right? I have to get unlucky when I'm an 86% favorite, I lose 86% of the time. That's how they have to compete against me. To stop me from being rich, to keep me panhandling. So they think I develop technology and I do, but not like I would if I had all my attributes in King of the World. I'd be, all I'd be doing is trying to create, I'm gonna be rich, right? The richest man ever. So I just need to be rich enough to lead forever. So that means there's, I'm gonna be giving away a lot of pizza slices, if you know what I mean. But I have the entire pizza and they don't even give me crumbs. I panhandled for two days and I got five cents in uh, real money and four cigarettes and a beer and I gave the beer away. And the four cigarettes set me up for cons. Because if there was ever anybody intact and the most lucid man on the planet, once again, uh, could control, I'll just read this sign here, all visitors, couriers must report to the security in the, in the main lobby of 700 University. It's like I'm an enemy combatant for sure. As soon as he walked by his, uh, I, I can articulate that. So now I'll say it in natural when he's not by, I'll just uninstall. All visitors, cur couriers must report to the security in the main lobby of 700 University. So that was somebody that was smarter walking by affected my biology. So if somebody's not intelligent, millions of people, they like it just happened to be that one person, but it's the entire world supply, but it's like an anchor to a boat. So now imagine the most capable person ever, right, being anchored for people that have a life cycle that lasts maybe 70 years to 120 years against the guy that's biologically immortal uh they try to poison me all the time and uh, uh so i'm immune to disease i i shouldn't age i could my head could get cut off and i die that way i'm sure right i'm sure if i got blown into peace so i could die but i'm just biologically immortal right you know what i mean my my mortal shell, which is my body, was, uh, but even before I realized I had this evolutionary gene, I knew I was life's test. I knew I couldn't be crushed for some reason. I knew I seen a sign and I seen invincible rather than, and I know it's subliminal now, some of it, mankind, but I seen subliminal, like a subliminal saying invisible, right? Like that's what, so that was the sign probably they brought, they made, 
that movie Unbreakable because of me, right? The Curious Case of Benjamin Button because of me. And they think I don't know this because they, they got to realize I'm forever on, forever on, and I have the ultimate power. So initiating system maneuvers, OW. To somebody has to pay the boat man for any uh, puppeteer events. So basically if somebody, if somebody is akin to this car right here, this car right here, it's like this car sitting here, and in this analogy, this car is a person. So this car is going about their business. They're doing nothing, right? They're just chilling, going about their business. And now a human hijacker comes in, smashes that window, steals the car, and then crashes the car, makes the car do something that the car never would have done. The car was just sitting there chilling. Now this car just crashed and killed that guy. So who's responsible? The car or the guy that, with the gun, so to speak, right? It's always the guy with the gun that, you know, like if you set somebody up, like if, if you, I've seen this, this is actual law. If you, if I say sell, I'm selling a car and I'm selling the car and this guy's gonna, I know he's gonna bring cash, so I'm gonna rob him because I know he's gonna bring cash because he's trying to buy a car, right? So that's just crushing any criminals right now with just keeping anybody that's aware of my thought right now dispatch them but uh because they're criminals they're terrorists right but anybody in the future that watches this would be uh would be that wanted to take advantage of that would be quarantined right? that being said uh so they know that they have money on them so that would happen right that's a likelihood to happen so sometimes what happens they go to get the money and murder ends up happening as a result because shit goes south so unforeseen variables and, and things go wrong right so that means the person that set that person up to get robbed also catches that murder charge, right? So these people that are setting up my biology, right, or whatever, hack my biology, you catch whatever charge you're trying to set me up because I know you're trying to evade your de deviation or what you're trying to hide or unregister me and you simultaneously for something that you're likely to do and I never do, right? And it made me blush, it made me blush at that moment. And that was an implanted thought, not an or or implanted reaction from an implanted thought, right? Not a natural reaction, right? They're hacking my biology, right? right. And all I have to do is uh, just show it's, it's all these perpetrators. And that we're near Einstein Bar, we're near Einstein. I like that. Einstein, and uh, if there was anybody that could identify with the pillars of creation, that's what uh, my climax would be for mankind. And the, the, the squeaky wheel always gets squeezed, so always getting the, the ones that pretend to be me that never squeak. So that's a flip on it because usually that's a, when somebody says the squeaky wheel gets greased, that's a, an organized crime term for killing somebody. Right? So that being said, greasing, making these people squeak, would be akin to making them rat to disintegrate the, the network and inspire alien Ness type of characters. I'll just what the system need is Elliot Nest. And if you fear cops or don't like cops, become a cop and make cops better. Change the brotherhood. Change the system. Break generational curses. So read about Elliot Ness. He brought down Al Capone, right? You want to be like Elliot Ness and bring down the organized crime. And unfortunately, with the Italians, they, uh, they, any food country, but they have pasta sauce and pasta sauces and pizza. And you can see the mine with, with tomato sauce, right? So no wonder there's a little Italy everywhere, right? So the Jewish people, I'll say Jewish, even though I am an, I do have the most desirable Jewish blood on the planet. So I could say Jew. Like my name's Christian, I go by Chris. I don't feel offended by people calling me Chris. Right? Not like how people are cho they cho we choose to be offended by stuff that uh, by words. Maybe it's how be offended by the that tone and body language of how people say certain words. Like for race words, right? Like you know, like for the end bomb. Right? 
black people say that to black people, but then certain relationships, black people allow other non-black people to say it, right? And they don't find it offensive, right? Whereas somebody that's a racist seeing the exact same thing, it's now offensive and it's hateful and you know what I mean? It's, they're, they're, that's not good, right? But I'm not saying, saying it endearingly, but if it was used in an endearing way to one of your friends, not just somebody on the street that you've never met, where you're likely to, especially, you know, it's one thing saying for, say, a Jew, right? That's just a religion. You can change your religion. You can't change your skin tone without technology, right? If you're fat, you can always eat a little bit less, walk a little bit more, get a dog, get a pet, right? A dog particularly, because dogs need to be walked, right? So they need to walk to use the washroom, so you're gonna get exercise. So instead of, uh, if you eat, when you eat basically, like this is noticeable throughout the world, like any Christian country or and or the Islamic, or uh, pardon me, Islam, when they, uh, I guess Islamic is the term, but when they fast, right? So there's two flips, two sides of the story, right? So two sides of the coin in this there. So for Islam, when they fast, they're shrinking their stomach. So it'd be like a balloon. So when they, every time they're not getting food, so now they're getting nothing in their balloon, so it shrinks over time. So now after Ramadan, their body, they start eating food and the body's like, hey, I haven't had food. It's a survival instinct for my biology now to say, hey, I need to store food in my biology and because I might die, right? So that means you get fat. People gain weight after Ramadan. Uh, you know, I, I Google searched it and, and I speculated this and I was 100% right that the likelihood that they would gain weight after Ramadan because uh, you're shrinking your stomach. So the flip side of the coin is at Christmas time or in, in Christianity or, uh, you know, I, I don't know other feasting rituals, but anyways, these countries want affinity, I guess. But uh, in Christianity at Christmas time, you know, the Gregorian calendar is the only calendar that matters because I was born in under the Gregorian calendar, so I'm going to be king of the world. So English will be the second language. Whatever, wherever I happen to be born with and the culture I lived under at that point in time would be the most universally encompassing language and uh, not religion, unfortunately. You know, I'm more of a spiritual. It's, I'm going to be an umbrella. If I'm playing God in carnal mode, right, it's, it'd be all... Um, all religions would fall under that umbrella, right? So, say uh, on a website, there might be some, because I'm gonna cherry pick, that means take the best philosophies from each religion that I identify with personally and find relevant for modern society and then future society. Like the, some that like 100% of the time, it's like they don't, I, I haven't read any spiritual book, but one thing they never wrote about in religion, which, doesn't make any sense right so it means that i could be the most divine guy that ever came right because i'm related to all these guys right but one thing they've never mentioned as far as i know i haven't read all religions i'm speculating here but they don't mention the relationship between an adolescent child and their parent the struggle especially same sex adolescent child and parent relationships where the button of the head the quintessential young bull versus old bull scenarios so that being said philosophically that means we teach our sons or daughters mother daughter relationships we teach them old strategies that don't necessarily work in current for this current generation like i learned this with my own kids personally like i was raising them for a street world living on the streets being street smart being all ghetto like and then i gave them like a middle class upbringing right so the reality at the time now I'm glad I did it, but if I didn't upgrade them, it would have been awesome, right? But then I'm teaching them how to judge people's character, read all these signs, and I'm glad I did because of the system, but... <coughs> so I just looked at the house, so there's the, there's the bell con, because I looked at Smith, so it's the Smith it house con, the school bus con. So anyways, they hacked me because I was good. they knew I was going to try to continue each continue my thought and they think they're superior for stealing my DNA so restricting everybody from doing that so unfortunately that was successful and uh so that the adolescent son adolescent or adolescent young bull old bull scenario right so what I was 
basically what I was doing is I was going in the deep end philosophically affecting the human ality for the rest of existence and people particularly I didn't mention Jews whatsoever so they didn't they felt slighted right so they hacked my biology because they they have uh, been preying on people with diamonds that's why they they have diamond they're the diamond district Jews that are the main problem for mankind basically any diamond district Jew because they prey on your thoughts by seeing diamonds which reflect your mind's eye the best right so because of people that parasite like particularly cheap Jews like I'm the most uh, I have the most desirable Jewish blood on the planet I have the most desirable Christian blood on the planet I have the most desirable Hindu blood on the planet every religion Islamic blood on the planet because I'm related I look like both Jesus Christ and Muhammad because Jesus Christ had kids with Mary Magdalene that's why there was the Vinci code that was a clue for me to figure out but they made the character a woman so it wasn't as overt or there's a book by the called The Host I'm complaining about being the host of human parasites and Stephanie Meyer with written with the exact same last name as mine M as in monarch E as in everlasting everlasting Y as in yours truly myself everyone E as in eminence and R as in royal right so that that's me Meyer right that's how it would be phonetically so since I had it played out so smooth in my mind the penis envy hacked it so I didn't come out as mellifluous as it, and the language wasn't as fluid as, as it would have been because of uh, inferior complexes, right? So because of this, they're making it so now it's, I'm, it's never, they made it so apparent that it's never advantageous for me to have surrogate kids because why would I want to make these people be uh, live forever and become like the quintessential James Bond villain, right? I want to breathe them out and sterilize these app evil cultivators. Like, there's 100% sterilization with 100% of the world's wealth. Like, stillborns, abortions, and uh, miscarriage uh, maneuvers that they utilize to prevent future genocide. That they, I, I cured disease in September 1984 for mankind. So, disease has been perpetuated for 40 years to justify raping my existence. And then I'm going to be king of the world, and these people don't expect to be punished. It's like, I'm telling them all the time how how they do these things and, and they, they hack, right? So anyways, the long and short, I was going in such such a deep philosophical moment that the Jewish people thought that they should have been a part of it and blah, blah, blah. They, they don't influence me whatsoever. I, I know how to control creativity in my brain. They have to hack my brain to make me stutter, right? And they have to be hacked to be good. The Jews are hacked. They're the most hacked people on the planet. There's 0.2% of the Jews on the planet and they get the most Nobel Prize. How many of them are responsible for my direct ancestry? Me, my dad, my grandfather, my mom, any, my uncles, my aunt, perhaps, right? My sister, my half brother, my half sister. Like how many of these Nobel Prizes? You know, Christian Morrison was born in my lifetime. He was the oldest living man. His name is Christian, my name is Christian. He lived during my lifetime. So I extended that man's life to be the oldest living man on the planet. He was a generational pedophile. So they only allow generational pedophiles to be super centurions. And I can prove the human soul exists. And these people think they could avoid the afterlife. It's like falling from a building and expecting to avoid gravity. Avoid gravity.